Hi, you're going to meet my husband today. He's going to make a Lichtenberg device. Stay to the end of the video and see what a Lichtenberg device does. It's very exciting. Hi, uh, my name's Charlie. Uh, Yvette and I were watching videos and we watched a, a person using a Lichtenberg device to uh, do some really cool fractal wood burning on uh, wood. And so we thought it'd be kind of neat to do it on a gourd. And like all the videos that, on YouTube that talk about the, using a Lichtenberg device, they, they all warn you that you shouldn't do it and it's dangerous. So um, this, this power supply that I'm using is for a, a neon light. And uh, it's a ten. It's ten thousand volts at thirty milliamps. So I mean, this this could hurt you. Um, I, I I don't recommend anybody really do this, but I, I'm going to uh, not show any details on how I really put it together, other than just show you um, what I I've done. And uh, so in this video, I'm going to talk about how I I set this up. Um, I, I will warn you it is dangerous there's high voltage um, and I'm gonna take a lot of precautions and do what I think's best but this is this is by no means a, a safe method um, one thing I noticed in the videos a lot of times people use um, clips they put nails in the wood and then they hands-free you know turn the power supply on and and burn the patterns um, that's kind of not that's a safer method but I'm thinking that you know to be creative I saw another video where the person was you know turned the turn the electricity on and started a pattern and turned it off and moved it to another location to try to uh, you know control a little bit of, of what's going on with the wood with the burning so that's kind of my goal um, we bought this foot pedal on Amazon <clears throat> it's the same kind of foot pedal if you use power wood carvers or our other tools you can just turn the tools on and off with your feet and um, that's something that we're going to use in this setup so basically what I'm going to try to do here is solder an extension onto this high voltage cord with a wire that's not designed to work with high voltage and I'm going to use heat shrink and, and try to build it up so that it will be okay to handle this um, the other thing we're going to do is um, we're going to use um, elect electrician gloves, Lyman gloves, while we're handling this to uh, to, tr to protect ourselves from being shocked as well. So after I put this together, we're going to uh, do a demonstration. We'll probably just work with this scrap piece of gourd and see how that goes. And if all goes well, that's going to do a video where she does something creative on an, on a on a whole gourd and. We'll, we'll be able to see how this works out in the long run. All right, so I'm going to show a video on kind of how I assemble this. Again, um, this isn't something I recommend anybody do. Um, so, but for some reason, I just want to try it and see how it works out because it, look, it looks pretty interesting. The results are interesting, so we'll give it a shot here. Thank you. All right, so what I'm going to do here is extend the wires a little bit and I, I like to have a, a stiffer wire for my probe so I'm doing a couple things number one I'm using this this heavy wire it's a little less flexible than this high voltage wire and then I'm going to uh, stiffen it more using PEX tubing this is a quarter inch PEX tubing I got it at Home Depot and uh, I'm going to use that also to kind of so to be stiffer so when you move the probe around you'll be able to have something that's not going to give and you'll be able to get a good good tight connection to the wood the, the <laughs> wood or gourd or whatever we're trying to uh, burn our burn into so um, so I'm going to splice the wires best I can here. So the first thing you, you need to do is tin the wire. So I'm just going to go ahead and get ahead of the game here. You want to get the wire hot and melt the solder onto the wire, not onto the iron. So you get a nice good flow onto the into the wire. So I'm do the same thing on my little sub piece. I put a little bit of solder on the iron so the heat to transfer to the wire well. And if I can get back in here, get that going, and I should 
melt the solder on the wire not on the iron and it should flow into all that copper there that's what's going to give us a good connection electrical connection here in a minute so one end of this wire will be our actual probe that we're going to uh, use to burn into the surface so this cop this uh, solder will help stiffen the wire up so like I said we don't want it to be real flexible we don't want to bend in when we're trying to uh, push it into the material copper is a really good really good at letting go of heat and taking on heat so it takes a kind of keep your temperatures up it's easy to burn yourself while you're touching it too but when we when we solder this to the high voltage wire we want to make sure we have a good joint because we don't want to start using this and then try to figure out why things aren't working and stuff if we're sloppy sloppy now it can make life difficult when we try to use it and then we end up troubleshooting it's almost always Thing mechanical or electrical if you touched it that's probably the first thing that's going to fail when you get ready to use the device that's from the school of hard knocks the other thing a little trick with soldering is when the solder is nice and shiny you know you got a good you did a good job on it when it gets when it has a dull look you uh, didn't get, do a very good job with heat transfer so we got this one more to do so since both these pieces are already tinned, basically I just have to heat both pieces up with the soldering iron and they will solder right together. Get a good, good bond. Like I said, this will be our failure point when this doesn't work later. I'm going to try different sizes of shrink tube. That actually doesn't look too bad there. I'm just gonna, I just got a variety of shrink tubing here and butt it up right against the other one. And then I'm gonna use Yvette's crafty heat gun. So there's two things. I'm trying to insulate that cut I just made. And I'm also trying to stiffen up the end of this wire. Like we said, we want it to uh, We want the wire to stiffen up to make it easier to press down with and use as a probe. It does go over it very well. It doesn't by a long shot. I'll just get in there as far as I can. You know what? I'm going to cut this in half. Diagonal cutters. get up and over that lip so like I said I think this is a 12,000 volt <laughs> power supply so each piece of this sh shrink tubing is rated for 600 volts so there's no way I'm going to get enough of them in there to uh, protect from that the high voltage that comes out of this transformer so we're going to have to figure out what to do about that okay so I got the heat shrink pulled up and over that joint completely so I get another layer layer over that. I have this um, PEX tubing I bought. You know, I thought that that would make a good plastic handle for this beast. And I'll get up and over that. Got that one. It's really not going up and over as much as I'd like to have seen, but that's okay. So I'm starting to get the stiffness I wanted, right? And so I'm gonna have a bit more there. And then I'm gonna take these bed, these bigger heat shrinks, put them up over here, overlap a little bit. All right. And then I bought some uh, longer tubes. I don't really need that much of them, but dang it. Ooh. Some scissors or something. Yeah. It's 
kind of longer than I need, but I can't cut it in half either. So I'll do it here. Oh, these smaller pieces would be good for something someday. I wonder if I should put another layer of the other ones on here first. Yeah. No, I won't. I think I will do. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, let's just go with the plan. There we go. So that's kind of what I'm shooting for right there. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, try to fill these tips up with a little more solder. Make sure they're. I want to be able to sharpen them, so you know I don't want that braid wire to uh, start falling apart when I'm working here. And then I added these little pieces of heat sh heat shrink tubing on the ends, so I just got the little tiny tips here. So I think that's it for the soldering part. I think um, I'm gonna sharpen these. There we go. That's what I need. Something. Just a little point so to stick. That electrical solder is silver and a little bit of lead, so it is a little it's malleable. And these little cutters work great for down but they're not strong enough to do the finish the job. I don't know that seems to be making fairly good contact. I think they gotta find somebody who's brave enough to hold them like this. I just try I'm just trying to get a tip on it so it'll be to, when we stab it into the whatever we're trying to burn I don't want it to uh, slip around. I will say that this is good for now and I think we'll make improvements as we use it and it doesn't work or works well or whatever. We have uh, a mixture of baking soda and water. I said powder before. That explains why my baking always comes out kind of weird. But anyway, baking soda and uh, there are actually people that talk about ratios and such with this so I'm not sure it's critical but you know baking soda helps helps the current flow. Pure water really is not a conductor. So you just putting some baking soda in there to conduct the electricity. And the people I've seen do this, they tend to make it, um, they wet the area they actually want the, the current flow or the patterns to kind of take up in. So that's one way to control it because once electricity starts picking its path, it's not a lot you can do about it. I don't like that and I'm not comfortable with holding the probes so I'm going to go to plan B. So I was going to try the probes the way I discussed but I'm a coward so I decided to go with these. Uh, so we drove small nails into the gourd and again we're doing baking soda. Baking soda to conduct the electricity between the two probes we got here. I'm using a piece of wood to weigh it down, so the videos I've seen other people do, they're doing it on blocks of wood and stuff. Um, the scored shard is really light comparatively. So, the foot pedal I told you all about before is down here. And I'm going to step on that and we'll let this electrify and see what happens. Um, there's a pull string on here also that may or may not be on, so nothing may happen the first attempt here. Nothing is happening. So let's pull the pull string. Ooh. Why isn't I turning off? Oh, there it goes. And I don't know what happens when they reach each other. So we're going to turn it off. We'll learn that later. So that's attempt one. What happens? So now we're gonna. I'm gonna try to uh, move the probe over here. Let's see. You gotta make sure this is off because this will shock the crap out of you if it's not. 
that's one of the reasons I got the foot pedal. But now it looks like the foot pedal not quite operating the way I thought it would. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So I'm just trying to make a something exciting happen here. It's not doing anything about it. Okay, but I actually like the way this is working. Did you want to plug the foot pedal? Oh. No, the foot pedal seems to be working. Ooh, that's cool. Seems to be keeping it. I've uh, been an electronics technician. I've worked with high voltage and other things. And I followed all the safety rules and did everything right and got shocked when safety things didn't work. So doing this is kind of nerve wracking because we're really not following all the rules and I don't want to get shocked. But here we are. There we go. This foot pedal is just a little quirky. I might have to take it apart. The next thing you do is get a toothbrush or something. Take these things out. And uh, so, of course, with the gourd, you can get these nails out very easily. And so you can kind of, they kind of uh, rub out the burnt area. To kind of exp to expose the pattern a little deeper. And, uh, just clean water. Like clean water. Clean water. And this is an old gourd shard that's been out, just laying around now studio here so it's not I think we get something fresher it'd probably burn a little differently too but so there you go this is our first attempt at, at this I'm going to use it on some of my wood wood projects um, and I think that's going to try it out on gourds I like the little fractals that kind of pop up here in the middle but all I think it's pretty cool again this is not a, a safe method, so um, if you don't know what you're doing, you probably shouldn't do it. I hope you've learned something in this video. It was a lot of fun to make. Uh, if you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please subscribe. Have a good day. Be kind, be caring, and be creative.